Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I want to give you guys a video with Maev that really goes to show how strong Maev can be. Now, there's there's a reason to play Maev, which is just she's a really strong hero. Getting cards for one gold is really good. And it allows the turbo leveling curve where you stay on one a bit longer and then propel yourself to four or five depending on how many big hits you take while you attempt to do that. Nevertheless, Maev gets some pretty good results, but there are moments where Maev excels extremely well. And there's one where there's like all the economy minion types in the game. I'm talking about pirates for the three golder, the level up guy, elementals for free rerolls, tokens. You know, if you have like the full package, Maev just goes like very nicely in an economy game. And if you can lead into certain builds, Dragons is a really big one. That's what you're about to see here. Because um, the way the hero power is really strong is if you're always every turn finding something useful for it. So Dragons does really well because if you have Caligos, any battle cry is going to do the trick. And a few other notable builds. Actually, primarily, I would say the other notable build would be Menagerie for that same reason. You don't have have to get like the perfect card and use your hero power on it. You just have to have cards that are useful. You have to keep in mind when a card costs one gold, it's actually free because you sell it back for one gold once you're done with it. So with Maev, you always use the hero power. You just need to hit something that's not useless. So play a build that uses a multitude of potential cards and you'll see your results with Maev go up a little bit. Enjoy. I feel like I haven't played Maev in ages. Hey, my favorite commander is back. Ready to get started? Kiwi today? Yeah, probably. Play PoE hour, two hours, something like that. We'll play lots of PoE too. Don't, don't worry. I've got some fresh recruits for you. That is pretty good. Got two beasts, so I want to attack with that first. So he does reach out. I know, right? Crazy. good tip to find PoE builds. Honestly, I just Google that shit most of the time, so... Eh. Uh, this is a good card. I, I guess I shouldn't skip out on good cards. Yeah, I should not, because that is terrible. But yeah, they changed matchmaking. You could play someone in alternate, so you could play them, someone else, them again, someone else. And that was one of the biggest problems in Battlegrounds as a result. No level? No, I, I like playing my Eva this way. I'm only freezing one minion, and it's a pretty good card that will be a double, so... I like playing it the wrong way, then. Maybe. How do you like playing it? Correctly cap? Oh. I just level all the way to five. Nice work out there. Keep up the pressure. I think I'm gonna let that one slide now. I should have leveled instead of the 2 4 demon. And he overvalue the 2 4 taunt reborn. I don't know. Alright, let me see. Spicy pretzel mustard. Turn one buys by play impact. Number one, Murloc Tidehunter, I know. Number two, Wrathweaver, I don't play demons. 
Number three, Salamento, I know. Number four, Micro Mummy, I know. Alley Cat, number four, yes. Deck Swabby, um, I'm surprised it's that high, but okay. So every single card is overpowered or economy card. Next, Acolyte of Cthulhu. Do I overvalue Acolyte of Cthulhu? Apparently, apparently not. Let's see turn two buys. Turn two, Acolyte of Cthulhu is higher. It's seventh. Turn three, which is when you can buy two drops. I will name the two drops higher than Acolyte of Cthulhu on turn three. Rabid Sarlisk, probably for slamming mid-range Sarlisk builds. Imprisoner. Nathrazim Overseer, which is the demon buffer. It's this one. Which is, you'd only buy that if you have a demon. And next up, Acolyte of Cthulhu. So Acolyte of Cthulhu is better than almost every single two drop. So actually, I knew it was good, but I, I didn't realize it was that good. In, in my opinion, it, it seems like it's better than I thought, even. Spawn? Yeah, spawn is really good, but not when you have... Uh, not on turn 3. Spawn starts to be good on turn 4, when it can actually buff enough cards. Obviously, I'll buy it on turn 3, because it's spawn. It's going to be good later, but... Let's do this. Pogos? Yeah, I like Pogos. Too risky leveling. I'm at 32 health against last place. Maybe a little risky, but... I don't expect to win this one, but I, I'm i hoping that I'm over 20 health, fresh on Tavern 5. And with an average turn on 5, I should be able to pull ahead. If I get absolutely nothing for like... One or two turns, I will get like eighth place. But that's just that's just part of how I play. I'm not interested in getting top four. Going for that first, maybe second. My favorite insta pick hero and in BGs. I don't know. Oh, he pulled Mama Bear and played everything again. If I can hit the Mama Bear. Ah. Uh, Yeah, that's, that was pretty unfortunate. 15 to 20. There's no way he had that last turn. He just got the Mama Bear, replayed all the beasts, and hit me for the high end. Actually, I don't think it was possible to hit for more than 20. But yeah, that was very unlucky. Fuck. The mech I have is not that good. Getting a Divine Shield for it is not, not the best thing. I actually think I'm going to drop. One dragon. Yeah, but uh, I had so many battle cries in hand that it should be okay. That 
That's what I would have picked. Better hire a recruit while you can. Total corruption! Total power! Frankenstein's monster build. I went from Murloc Menagerie to Dragon Menagerie. Oh my god. Massive taunt. Oh. Okay, at least I'm not dead. Next turn, I'm going to sack the Light Fang. Alright. Should be fine. Yeah, it's like a little greedy, but it's not that bad. Dragons lost to the ghost. I think I'm gonna stay on five just to kill him, and I'll probably have to finish second. A good tactical choice.
should go after Nadina to win. Yeah, but if I go after Nadina, don't get Nadina, I could lose to him. But it looks like he's struggling, so if he's struggling, just killing him gives me second place. And getting Nadina earlier might not be a good thing. I want to, I want to play Nadina like on the very last round. Good enough. Take your shekel. Your minions really pulled their weight. Yeah, Maev has a really strong economy advantage, and keeping the Murloc and cycling the demon like I did gave me quite a big economic advantage on top of it. So off a terrible start, off a one Caligos, turn 13, this is very strong. On the other hand, it's fucking Jandis slinging Menagerie bouncing, so probably screwed, but we'll see. No, this looks okay. Min damage, but doesn't really matter. Zero percent chance to kill him. Your minions really pulled their weight. Tough to improve this. Go ahead and hire one of these recruits. I need a drink. Okay, he's still dead. 20, I 15. 20 means like every time. No range. I still hit him for 5 less. Okay, whatever. Gimme. Stole that one, dude. I just want to remind you guys, the moment I picked up the Calicos, everyone in chat was livid. What happened, guys? What happened? I'm listening. Even the turn I bought it, it was my second biggest minion. <laughs> 